Welcome back, nerds. Fino here with a guide for the Da Vinci Exhibition Quest. Kirei's favorite pincushion comes at you with an army of mid-boss enemies, each with their own nasty trick. It's a very weird fight and it operates kind of like a reverse escort mission, in which you need to keep Da Vinci alive until she's the only remaining enemy. The reason for this is that if Da Vinci bites it, every remaining enemy will enrage, getting massive attack and defense buffs, among other things. It is possible to defeat these enraged enemies, but that's high in territory and I'll talk about it later. But for now, just assume that you really don't want this to happen. But the entire time, Da Vinci's gonna be right there, just asking to get murked. And she's not gonna make your life easy, either. She'll constantly spam charge effects and these come in three varieties. A multi-tick increase to a single enemy, a single tick across her entire front line, and the most dangerous of these is actually a part of her standard skill set, Pioneer of the Stars. On top of giving her charge, it also provides Infoam Pierce and a crit buff. Her Noble Phantasm already bypasses defense, so this combo can actually be a serious threat to your team. Now unlike this fight's initial run, we have access to Castoria and she can bail you out. But you can also use the intended way of countering Pioneer. All enemies in this fight have a permanent debuff that makes them lose charge when they're hit. This includes Da Vinci, so if she's like a bar away from filling her meter, it might be a good time for some love taps. This is especially important if you're about to do a kill turn for another enemy, because Da Vinci could potentially use her extra action to charge and then fire off an NP. But you want to be careful about just how much damage you're unloading onto her. If you pop her bar, every enemy on the field immediately has access to their NP. Two of her charge skills also gain additional effects, so you want to make the transfer relatively late into the fight. Now the mid-boss enemies have their own bag of tricks. Most of them enter the field with a landmine, a debuff that procs on whoever attacks them. Castoria can cleanse the persistent effects off, but these can still disrupt you on the turn you trigger them. My footage is probably a decent ways in, so let's rattle these off. Alternatively, you could just use your eyes and read their buff list in-game, but this one's for you audiobook enthusiasts out there. The old gear skill seals for a turn. You can let Castoria eat this after using her skills. Enemies can reobtain their landmines, so you'll want to take this out first. The Helter Skelter applies a multi-turn curse. You can just cleanse it off during your next Castoria NP, so leave this alive as long as you can. The White Chimera purges all buffs, so have either Castoria or your third frontliner eat it. The Gazer nerfs NP damage. Take it out anyway to avoid regular Gazer things. The Bicorn guts your NP gain, so you absolutely need to cleanse this off and take it out in one turn. You may have noticed that I'm using Squirturia, and there are a few reasons for that. Firstly, I wanted to feel better about all the money I wasted rolling her. The roll stream is out there somewhere. Bad times. Secondly, this Bicorn is the only Lancer in the fight. This battle involves many classes, and unless you run a Berserker or an Extra Class, you'll run into something that resists you. I opted to deal with a single speed bump, and in exchange I got access to perk number 3. Squirturia is the single most terrifying single target looper in the game. She can loop from Berserkers, and in fact, one of the teams for the Round 190 Plus node did exactly that. And her ability to do this is relatively consistent, even during Castoria's downtime. Played normally, this is a long fight, and one-shotting more enemies with Excalibur Vivian means fewer chances for those enemies to rebuff. You don't have to pick Squirturia, but I'd recommend a single-target arts attacker with multi-turn buffs. Alternatively, the traditional run for this fight used BB, who doesn't have all that much in the way of firepower, but she does have a party charge in her NP and class neutrality across the board. The Soul Eater enemy doesn't have a buff, and instead it just spans a battery. So deal with it at your leisure, especially if you took out the Helter Skelter by this point. The Sphinx doesn't have a landmine either, but it spams a taunt, meaning you won't have a choice but to kill it. Just be aware that because Da Vinci is placed on the left, it's very difficult to splash damage onto her during the same turn. So consider sitting on a Castoria NP to make sure she can't wombo you while the Sphinx is out. The Manticore applies an NP seal, which you should eat with your third member or Castoria after she uses hers. The Red only applies a defense down, no big deal. The Placeholder Ghost completely drains the NP of whoever attacks first, which is a huge pain for Art's main attackers. Unless you have an NP Arts Brave Chain ready, just have your third member deal with it. The Giant Demon Boar is extremely dangerous, and its landmine sets your health to 1. This effect is cleansable, but whoever pops this is in some serious peril until you heal up. Due to a mishap, I ended up losing my Squirturia's guts to this, and that had disastrous consequences down the line. The last enemy on the list is Capless. Sorry, Spriggan. It applies a stun, which is no big deal. Just don't hit it with your main attacker first. Sometime before this point, I'd recommend popping Da Vinci's Bar while you have Castoria's Protection up. I made a pretty serious error and got into a position where my squirt ate too many hits, and any card combination I used would pop Da Vinci while she had her Invuln Pierce. If you see a fade cut later in this footage, that's me trying to scum a better result. But in the end, I had to take the L and fight Da Vinci's last bar with my supports. I had Ryder Murasaki in my backline, but as you're about to see, things go absolutely off the rails in my quest to assassinate Merlin. Now, I alluded to fast clears of this fight, but due to Da Vinci's death buff, you need some form of defense bypass, and your damage needs to be on point. If you whiff a kill or a loop, these enemies will mess you up with their massive attack buffs. 
Now there are two arts farmers that have this effect built into their kit. Muramasa and Mysterious Alter Ego Lambda. As long as you keep them fed with buffs in charge, you have a shot. Alternatively, you can use someone like Chen Gong to clear the fight normally. Well, normal by Gong standards until Da Vinci goes down. At this point, you need to gain defense bypass externally from someone like Sherlock. If you do the fast route, go deep on backline supports because you can reliably force a Da Vinci NP through her bar break. This will let you rotate them in. But otherwise, I'll let the rest of this disaster run play out. Enjoy.
行きますよ私は星を探すのですさあ、幕を開けてアラウンドカリバーンフリーどこから手をつけたものかな、うん、お任せ、夢のように片付けよう、うん、バハ遠慮はしませんとも狙い撃ちです東方の三博士北欧の大臣知恵の果実我が英知我が万能はあらゆる英知を凌駕する不毛のユニベーサーレ私は星を探すのですさあ、幕を開けてアラウンドカリバーンクリーンまだまだ行くよー白兵隊、行きます君の道行きを信じようホールドアップ王の話をするとしよう。いいともちろん。星の宇宙に物見の宇宙、楽園の端から君に聞かせよう。罪なき者のに通るのに、ガーデンオブアバロン。何。さあ、したとも。ええ。
東方の三博士北欧の大臣知恵の果実我が英知我が万能はあらゆる英知を凌駕する魔王のウニベルサーレ知ってますか次はマシンガーを盛大に行こうか